This is something different. I don't recognize this. Oh. Hey guys. I decided I wanted to start up a new survival Let's Play series. We're gonna keep things a little more simple here, not using new in town, but I do have some surprises and some new things I wanna be trying in this series. So I hope you'll stick around as we play some nice, pretty close to vanilla survival gameplay. As always, we're gonna go ahead and start by gathering some wood, and then we'll take a look at our surroundings and see what we are working with. Over here, we have some wolves, of course, and I thought I saw sheep over here. That'll be useful to get so that we can make a bed. Oh, and here's an azalea tree. Pretty cool. Ah, and here's one of the surprises I was talking about. Um, I am playing with just a couple of data packs. Although I'm not playing with New in Town, I am playing with Mine Treasure, uh, which is a really cool data pack that I really enjoy. If you're not familiar with Mine Treasure, I am quite a lot, uh, so I'm not going to worry about this book here. But it really cool data pack. Uh, Frozy's a really great developer. Uh, it just adds a little more variety to mining. There's um, biome specific loot uh, and there's very different rarities with some really cool items and rewards. Okay, so we've got some coal, some stone and a little bit of iron too, which is nice. A little bit of early iron never hurt. So I think we will keep going and see where we want to end up building. The village will be a great place. We don't have any food right now besides this raw mutton. You know what? Actually, we can use this campfire real quick and cook up this mutton. Perfect. Now we're getting the vanilla experience. So let's take a look around. We got the village bell over there, another grindstone down there. So we have some villagers that have jobs, which is always nice. There's a chest and some bread. Excellent. I'm actually going to keep the mutton on me. Uh, and I'm going to take this chest. Um, let's see. Is there any more over here? This seems to be the end of the village. Oh, no. Looks like there's another house over there. Pretty nice cave with a tree all the way down there. That's cool. Um, no, this is not connected to the village. This is something different. I don't recognize this. Oh, interesting. So I found this little stone hut, basically, and I don't recognize it. It's not connected to the village, but it has this weird block in here that I can't hit. Oh, Interesting. So I right clicked it. I right clicked it with my hand earlier, but when I right clicked it with a pickaxe, it says this is not the correct item for this arcane pedestal. Interesting. Well, maybe this book will explain some things. It's time to leave this forsaken place behind. The tragedies that have unfolded here have become too great to bear, and there's nothing left for me here anyway. I've sealed the rest of the tower. Only one arcane lock remains. While not a permanent solution, it should dissuade anyone who comes looking for treasure. After all, such a person would be unlikely to leave any gold behind. To whoever stumbles upon this terrible place, heed this. No good can come from restoring the tower. Leave the arcane pedestal alone. This book is called Forgotten Diary Number 6. This is very interesting. And it said to leave the arcane pedestal alone said there was an arcane lock on the tower and then also the word gold was bolded so it says that this is not the correct item for this arcane pedestal if i click it with anything so maybe i need to click it with gold for it to do something i set up a bit of a basic base in here for now i don't know if we'll stay here forever um i probably do want to build like a, a house closer to the village um, but this is pretty close. I mean, we can, I think we can see the village from outside. Oop, looks like the wolves got busy. I can see the village right over here. Um, and we have a nice cave here. So it's not like inconveniently located. I guess we'll just wait and see kind of how we're feeling about this location. For now though, let's put away the resources that we've collected, craft some new tools and get our iron smelted up. All right, it's the next day, our iron is smelting. I do wanna figure out what the deal is with this arcane pedestal, but it does require gold. So in the meantime, we might as well get to work on building a house. I do wanna build something in the style of a villager house, although certainly a little bit better and definitely a lot bigger. So that means we're gonna need some stone blocks, cobblestone stone and stone bricks, I think, possibly even some deep slate. We'll see how accessible those blocks are without spending a whole lot of time on mining. And then we also want just quite a lot of spruce logs. Fortunately, there are plenty in the area. We'll 
uh, collect quite a lot when we clear out where we're going to be building. And then while we're digging for stone, if we in the meantime happen to find some gold, then that'd be great. Let's go ahead and start by clearing out the area that we want to build in. I think this spot around here feels pretty nice. There's no villager houses uh, past this little path here, and we don't need to keep the paths where they are. Uh, so we can build our house kind of overlapping some of these paths or replacing them. Um, and this is really conveniently located because the tower, as the book calls it, is just over there, just behind me. Uh, and we have this nice cave here, which hopefully will be a good source of at least stone, you know, certainly that. And hopefully some other ores. We'll have to check that out when we go mining later. And I think that should be plenty. Once these leaves clear away, it should be pretty obvious where the area of our house is going to be. It doesn't need to be huge. Uh, in fact, this is probably more than enough. So we'll do a little bit of terraforming next and then start preparing to go mining to figure out uh, about what kind of blocks we want. And that should about cover it, I think. I just pulled this hill back a little bit and extended it down a little bit uh, over here. I'm thinking the house will be kind of around this area, so clearly not very big. I have a couple of spruce saplings set up for some mega tigas or mega taiga trees, so that should help provide some more wood that we'll need for our build, uh, as well as set this area as podzel, uh, which I think will look really nice just to help spice up this area a little bit. With that, we're just going to make sure that we are set up on food and then hop down into this cave here and see what kind of, oh, hello creeper, and see what kind of resources we can gather from it. Let's try and take care of this guy safely first. Wow, that's actually pretty impressive that it uh, was able to explode from so far away. Our iron also finished smelting, so we're gonna go ahead and make an iron pickaxe. And we'll go ahead and hold on to the rest of the iron before we decide whether we want a bucket or shears or something with it. It is getting close to nighttime at this point, but I think we are going to just go ahead and hop down into the caves. There were plenty of chickens and sheep and pigs and cows all around. I went ahead and left the cows and sheep alone just in case we want wool or leather later so that we can collect it from them directly with the sheep or domesticate them in the case of the cows. So with that said, we're gonna go ahead and hop down into the cave. Got another treasure chest here. Let's see, mossy cobblestone will be nice for building, as will the ferns. We'll go ahead and take this. Okay, see a skeleton down there. I didn't make a shield. Uh, I'm not terrible at fighting skeletons, so I think we'll be fine. There we go. Definitely a lot of mobs down here already. Hopefully the brightness is working for you guys. Hello, gentlemen. I would like to get down, please. Come on. There you go. Ooh, a potato. I don't love potatoes. <laughs> I really wish that was a carrot. We have potatoes back at the village. So this cave doesn't appear to go anywhere. Uh, we will dig out a little bit. Sometimes they do just kind of end abruptly. Um, and also, of course, we need the stone. But let's go ahead and just confirm there's no other like branches that I missed. Oh, there is this over here. Okay. So that's a lot better. Oh, good, some iron. Another treasure chest, okay. Oh, a blast furnace is a super great get. Lots of other blocks that we can use for building, including some podzel. Experience bottles are nice. 
And we do actually want some andesite as well for our build, um, so we can use that for texturing. We're gonna end up needing quite a lot of blocks, and of course, most of them we can just mine up here in the way of stone and andesite. But I do also wanna make sure that I'm getting the ores that I need. It sounds like it's raining upstairs. I guess I can go for the coal right now. We've only just barely gotten started and our inventory is pretty nearly full. We still have quite a lot of space. Um, so that's where we'll collect all the blocks that we need. Of course, these pickaxes won't last forever. Um, and as hopefully we can get a couple more ores. Here's our first lapis lazuli. Okay, creeper, don't blow up my gold. That's right, come over here, good. Run away, okay. And, there we go. Okay, found our first gold, excellent. So we'll be able to smelt this up and see if we can get that arcane pedestal to work. Oh wow, our first rare treasure. Some free iron. I hear a zombie, but I don't think it sees me. Uh, leather, super great. Uh, we're gonna put the arrow back for now. Redstone is nice, goodbye potato. I don't really need all these rabbit's feet, but I will take them. And a compass, we don't need the uh, uh, rotten flesh. Great, I'm gonna leave that chest there because my inventory is very full. Oh. Is this a different cave? Wow, holy cow. This network is just absolutely huge. I mean, this particular cave isn't, but all these caves are connecting so, so much. We can always use more iron. Yeah, I, I guess we'll go ahead and collect it. So with that, that's 64 raw iron and our inventory is full. We're gonna actually head back up to the surface and then get to work on collecting some more uh, building blocks and such. Thankfully, it is still daytime, although it is raining, but we can get back to our little base, nice and easy. And we already have a, uh, oh, two mega taiga trees, mega spruce trees. Uh, so we'll be able to cut those down for some more wood shortly. We'll wait till after our mining trip for that. Let's go ahead and put everything away. And actually, since we have them, we can go ahead and put our blast furnaces here. We'll start getting the iron melting. And let's actually see if we can figure out this arcane pedestal too. So right now we have raw gold. Let's see if that'll do it. No. Let's go ahead and smelt it up. A couple of gold ingots have already finished. Let's see if that... No. Okay. Well, I very seriously, well, let's try um, golden nuggets. No. Well, I very seriously doubt this pedestal requires a specific like iron tool, and I don't want to have to cycle through all of them to find the right one uh, until I know that that's what I have to do. We only have a total of five gold ingots right now, uh, but if we get a little bit more, we can try a gold block and see if that works. And if it doesn't, then I guess we'll try like, you know, maybe a gold pickaxe, let's just mine it or something, or gold sword but we'll wait until later to test that out. Since we do have some iron to spare, I'm gonna go ahead and get suited up. And I crafted a bucket as well. You know what, now that I'm thinking about it, I think I wanna make a shield as well. Here we go. Now I feel much more prepared to head back into the caves, try and get a little more gold, and we'll at the same time try and mine up just a bunch of building blocks. Okay, well we do have this pit down here we haven't explored yet. There are some creepers on the way, but it looks like it does get down to deep slate level. Um, oh, I thought that was gold. That's just iron. Uh, but let's head down that way, I think. Nice, big, and wide noodle cave. Some more iron, of course. Uh, quite a bit more iron, actually. Uh, but then, yes, we get down to deep slate, and hopefully at that point, gold will be a little bit more common.
Oh, glow squids, great. So we can make some glowing signs. I hear running water as well. There's water over there. Oh, that one just died, so sad. Let's get those glow ink sacks before they despawn. Just the, oh, we got a couple, great. Oh, okay, hey, stop it. Can you chill, dude? Thank you. Um, some redstone. We already have some, but you never know how much you're gonna need. It's easy to get. Mm, sounds like this cave does continue over here. Oh, yep, right there. I hear baby zombie. Sir? Thank you. Oh, it must continue over there. Interesting. Well, let's check down here. I don't think we need any deep slate for our build, so I'm not going to worry about mining some right now. Primarily looking for gold, and then we're going to return back up and actually mine the building blocks that we need. Oh, there's some gold. Awesome. So just three gold. We need one more if we want to craft a gold block. Oh, I hear a slime. Um, up or down? Let's go this way first. Oh, I think I'm getting closer. I think it's up. Oh, yep, there's a cave. Haha. -ha. Hello, slimy boy and zombie. Nice. Four slime balls. Still on the hunt for gold blocks, though, or gold ore. This is an interesting little little cluster. Iron and redstone and lapis all right next to each other, right for the taking. Love it. Oh, secret gold. Nice. Okay, well, uh, that's technically all that we need, uh, or at least hopefully all that we need. There's more redstone over there, but I feel pretty good with where we are. We're going to now go back to closer to the surface area, closer to the entrance, and get just a whole bunch of stone and andesite so that we can smelt up the stone, in, or smelt up the cobblestone into stone and have plenty of building blocks for our house. I will just take a quick peek down here. It looks like this cave opens up into a larger cavern. If there's diamonds visible, then of course those are worth getting. Oh, look at that. There are some under the water there. Oh, come back. There we go. Okay, it doesn't appear there's any more diamonds here, so let's go ahead and return to the surface. Or that is to say, near the surface, so that we can mine the remaining building blocks that we need. Okay, our inventory is already full with the two stacks of andesite. I'm just estimating how much we'll need. Um, so we're going to head back to the surface once again, put away all of our resources, and then we'll return to get the remainder of the blocks. Before we put things away, let's get things smelting. And start mining up some cobblestone. Okay, that's four stacks of cobblestone and some change. I think that should be plenty. We'll smelt up uh, probably just two of them and hope that that is enough stone and cobblestone to get us covered. Again, we're not building something huge, so I think that'll be just fine. While we're waiting for that to smelt, we'll go ahead and chop down the mega spruce trees. Uh, we do, of course, at this point have enough gold to try gold block on this pedestal, um, but I think I want to stay on track and finish the house first, and then we'll see what that has going on with it. All right, I think that should be plenty of wood. Hopefully once the stone smelts up, then we should be good to go on building our house.
And I think that should do it. It's pretty humble, but I think it'll work for my purposes, and I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Taking a look around, back here we have the kind of fireplace area where we've got a campfire and uh, furnaces for smelting. I do still need to add a hay bale up there. I didn't want to... Oh, I have a second campfire up at the top of the chimney, um, and I didn't want to take a hay bale from the village. So we still need to get a hay bale when we get a farm going, uh, but that can wait. That's totally fine. Um, I decided to put these uh, the storage down here kind of under these windowsills, not for any real reason. Um, you know, it's not like uh, they need to be out of the way. And I worry that it does make this space feel a little bit empty, but I figure we'll fill this space up with other stuff over time, um, like, you know, trophies, rewards or something. So at least for now, I think I'm going to keep them there. We have blocks over here on this side uh, and items over here. In fact, put these dirt away. This is going to be kind of like our tool chest where we'll put extra shovels or other tools that we get from like mine treasure in particular. And then over here is like our valuables chest. We have a little loft section up here for our bed, uh, which I actually need to set my respawn point for, and a little extra barrel for any personal belongings that we want to put in there. I think I'll go ahead and put the mine treasure guidebook in there, for example. These trap doors make a nice little kind of banister up, up, up at the top, or like molding, uh, rather, up at the top. Um, and then we have our entryway, which is, again, pretty subtle. Outside, a little bit of a small inlet patio. Of course, the whole house is kind of depressed into the ground. And then outside, we see our roof. Did a little bit of extra landscaping after the uh, replay footage, after the time lapse there. Here's where the windows kind of let out and let us see a little bit. I may end up moving this rock. I may not. Um, and then, of course, we have the back of the chimney. Again, a little bit of extra landscaping with some plants and such. Uh, and then the other window out here, which is even more inlet, which I really like. That's exactly what I was going for. It is getting late, so I think we'll go ahead and wait till morning to craft up the gold ingots into a gold block and see if that will work on the arcane pedestal back at the tower. Okay, our nine gold ingots are crafted up. I'm gonna eat this rabbit. And let's see if this works. Oh! Okay, interesting. It said it's not the correct item, but something clearly happened. It turned white. Did the lectern change? The book change? No, it looks to be the same. Oh, the spruce slabs. They changed. They're not on the ground anymore. Aha! We have a lantern, and the tower now extends even higher. It looks like we repaired it some. We have another pedestal up here. This one is kind of a bluish. Based on the other one having been gold, this one is probably diamond. And a red one. So if I had to guess, this one is probably redstone. And then that suggests that that white is really more of like an iron. Now, since the first pedestal required a gold block, it stands to reason that the red pedestal and the what looked like a white pedestal will require a redstone block and an iron block. We have plenty of iron and redstone, so we'll go ahead and grab that craft up some blocks, and I'm going to bring a single redstone and iron ingot too, just in case. Okay, so here's the white pedestal where the gold one used to be, so let's try an iron ingot. No. Okay, that's not terribly surprising. I figured it would still need a full block, but I wanted to check. Okay, let's see what happens. Okay, no visible... Oh! Okay, well how am I... Oh, okay, okay. So we got a gate that opens when we get close. That's pretty cool. Like an automatic entry. And what appears to be a little courtyard comes right up to this wall of dirt area, so we'll clear that out later. But we also have a green pedestal now. So the logic follows that this probably requires a block of emeralds, so we will probably need to do some trading with villagers later. For now, let's go upstairs and try and get the red pedestal working. We don't have enough diamonds yet to make a diamond block. I guess we could try a single diamond, but we will wait on that. Okay, moment of truth for the red one. There we go, okay. Just extends the tower even higher this time it appears. And just another gold pedestal. Well darn. Unfortunately, we don't have enough gold to make another gold block and use this pedestal. So that will have to wait. Fortunately, I was planning on going mining again to get some resources for my mine build because in addition to just a nice build, which will be mostly wood, I do want a lava farm and that's gonna require some dripstone. Come back down. Oh, wait a second. So we have our diamond pedestal here. 
And we have this purple one now. That's new. It must have come with the red pedestal. I don't know what would be purple. I mean, it looks like amethyst, so it could be an amethyst block. That seems to kind of break the pattern, but I guess we'll deal with that later. I do want to clear this up a little bit. We have a nice courtyard here, we might as well actually use it. I think in addition to the mine, we'll probably clear some of these trees around the tower too, so that we can just have a nice clean path through the forest over this hill. I think we'll even make the, the mine build have a bit of a bridge across the gap here, or possibly go around it. I guess we'll see how we want to end up laying it out. So now knowing that we need more gold, more diamonds, and presumably amethyst, I guess, we will go mining, but I think we're not going to do it down here. This will still be a great cave to get stone and stuff, um, and I think there will be other resources that we can find in some of the caverns we haven't explored yet. But since we need dripstone, it doesn't seem like this area is a dripstone biome. So I think I'm going to try going over to the meadow back there that we were initially going to go to to live and see if there are any caves around that area. We know that there's a lush cave way back at spawn, which I believe is that direction kind of behind me. So we want to kind of stay away from that, but not too far because dripstone and lush caves don't spawn super close to each other, but they also don't spawn in opposite parts of the world either. I do have enough iron to make an iron sword though, so I think I will do that. And since we are getting dripstone, we also need lava, so I might make a couple of extra buckets as well. All right, let's make our way over that way and see if there's any surface caves. Once again across the river. I think I'll probably make a bridge across this at some point. So yeah, this is kind of why I'm going in this direction. So if we look over there, there is a large kind of carving in the mountain there. So that's likely to lead to the lush cave. They're usually quite large. So I don't necessarily want to go that direction. I'm hoping over here, there will also be kind of some surface caves and carvings in the side of the hill. And then we might be able to find some dripstone that way. Of course, we also don't have to find a dripstone biome because dripstone can just appear in patches too. Okay, we do have this down here. Uh, that doesn't go anywhere. That looks like, yep, that looks like a cave. Hopefully, this doesn't look huge. The other reason we're starting in a meadow rather than trying to find like low ground uh, is because coal is more common the higher up you are. And we used a lot of coal to smelt up all the golden iron. Ooh, okay, another rare treasure. Um, oh my gosh, chorus fruit is a weird one. Cherry saplings, flowers, but then these flower pies gives instant health one and regeneration two for 10 seconds. Well, very nice. Now I don't need some food for a little while. Hey, hey, where did you come from, dude? Another one down there. Um, well, I guess I will block that off real quick while I finish mining this coal. Okay, hello. Nope, that's illegal. Okay, so coal acquired. Obviously that is why we're getting a lava farm so that we can use that for fuel instead, but coal is still important for torches, which of course we are notably low on. Um, oh, there's more coal up there. I hear another zombie, but I don't see him. He might be way down there. Oh, he's probably up on the surface because it's nighttime. This cave does continue over here. Oh, look at that. Tripstone, excellent. Looks like we'll probably need to use a water bucket to get down there. If we put it here, that should take us all the way down safely. Let's light up this space so we don't get surprised on the way back up. There's a creeper over there, but he's keeping his distance. We'll leave him alone for now. Okay, let's go down here and get some dripstone. Oop, okay. And we wanna descend carefully so we can light up the place so we're not surprised by any mobs. I don't see any immediately. Oh, emeralds, cool. There's none immediately nearby. We're gonna wait to mine a lot until we have a nice perimeter. I think it was pretty lucky coming here at nighttime because there really aren't a lot of mobs down here. Just that zombie right behind us that we'll take care of really quick. So we should be perfectly safe to start mining up some resources. I think I'll start with these emeralds up here. Ah! Silverfish! I guess we are technically in a mountain biome. Yeah. 
I'm gonna swim back up to the entrance and place this barrel so that we can put away some of the stuff that Mind Treasure is giving us that we don't immediately need. Oh, now the mobs are spawning. Okay. I saw a creeper over here. There he is. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. Oh, spider. Wah. Okay. I didn't get my dripstone yet, so I will do that. Oh, good. Some lava. I remember if I saw this before, but oh, it's kind of in a weird place to get. Let's see if I can reach it. Oh, I guess that's not that bad. Actually works pretty well so that I can do this. Don't need any of that stuff. Okay. Okay, pit down here. Um, I'm gonna grab some water for that. Uh, go back up here, I guess. Oh. Okay, uh, oh, it looks like there is some water down there. Uh, hopefully that's not just like a fully flooded cave. But, place this. And it does appear to be... Oh, that's annoying. Technically, that would be a really great place to potentially find diamonds, since they can usually spawn more often when they're not exposed to air. So, I think I will make a crafting table. And some doors. And I will also put another barrel to put some of this stuff away. Alright, let's dive down in. And I guess we'll start with this iron. I don't really need the lapis right now. Ooh, there's tons of uh, iron, though. Ooh. Oh, that could have been a lot worse. Oh my gosh, a trial chamber. Wow, dug straight through, trial chamber, diamonds over there, which we can try and safely get. Light this up a little bit. Even more cave, some gold, Wow, holy cow. Okay, uh, let's calm down. <laughs> okay, first off, let's go get those diamonds. Okay, is it just one? Yes, yes it is. Okay, no problem. Whew, trial chamber, this is gonna be so cool. I don't think we're gonna do that right now. We are not as equipped as I would like to be. That might be something to do next episode. I do want to go get that gold, though, and see if there's any other diamonds around the area. Wow, this cave is deep. Suppose we have this water, we might as well use it. Wah. Yeah! Oh, there's another diamond over there above the trial chamber. I don't necessarily want to get too close. Oh, there's tons of diamonds over there. So there are some diamonds hanging over the trial chamber there. In theory, they would be very easy to get, but I don't want to get too close to the trial chamber and have the spawners go off right away because we're not going to be exploring the chamber yet. And I don't want the, mo the mobs are persistent and I don't want them just hanging around and potentially getting lost. I can go for that diamond safely though. Oh, dang it. So I was a fool and didn't bring an extra iron pickaxe. Unfortunately, we don't have enough stone and cobblestone to make a furnace, so we will have to return to the surface and continue exploring this place another day. However, we got everything that we needed, so I think this is a great time to stop anyway. We will go ahead and grab some lava, though, while we still are here, and some more glow ink sacks. Let's see if we can remember the way out of here. I think it's just up here. Yeah, easy. And now the fun job of organizing our inventory to bring the things that we want. Back up the water stream. And is there anything in this barrel that we want to bring? I suppose I'll bring the grass blocks. We can bring the coarse dirt. Um, all of this is nice, but I think I'm going to leave it here for now and come back for it at another time. It is nighttime, so we're going to have some risky business returning to the town. I thought I had noticed at the end of the last episode, and I am annoyed to confirm that I did indeed appear to leave at least one log at the top of that mega taiga tree. So we'll need to take care of that at some point. Hey, I was recording. Ow. 
We are back home and smelting up resources. I have a new iron pickaxe and it is morning once again. So I'm just gonna mine up a little bit of extra cobblestone off camera. I believe I have most of what I need, but I want just an extra stack to be safe. Then we're going to clear the trees that are in the way and start building our mine. And that should do it. This cave isn't particularly large, so I didn't want the mine to be too huge either. It's mostly just a nice looking entrance that also lets us access the tower back there a little bit more easily. I did add a few extra details off camera, so let's take a look here. So of course the mine entrance is where we actually enter the build. We have a few crates up here of barrels and chests using spruce trap doors to spice them up a little bit, but it's mostly just a covered platform which I think ends up looking really nice, especially from the other side, as we'll see in a moment. From here, we have a staircase going down to the bridge that crosses the cave so that we can have easier access to our tower. And then on the other side of the bridge, uh, we can see, of course, the mine platform from this side, which again, I think looks really nice. Uh, and then we have our stairs down into the mine itself. I added these boulders of cobblestone and mossy cobblestone as well, just to make it look a little bit more active and added some texturing to these flat walls. Not a whole lot, uh, but just some so that it doesn't look purely like raw stone. And as we get more uh, andesite and mossy cobblestone, we may yet add more detailing as well. Of course, we have torches descending down with us as the stairs quit hugging the wall and begin uh, descending down into the cave itself, where we have one final platform with a ladder to help protect us a little bit from any mobs that might chase us from any dark spots. There shouldn't be any spawnable areas in this section of the cave, uh, but I thought that this was a nice addition anyway. This is where I mined the extra cobblestone that I needed for the build, primarily for those boulders, but it's also where we're going to build the lava farm. Now, lava farms are very interesting because they can be as big and as complicated as you want them to be, and we don't really need particularly big and complicated. We're not gonna incorporate any redstone. We're just gonna set up some cauldrons, some pointed dripstone, and let it work on its own. To start with, I want to get rid of this copper ore and add a little bit of a floor right here just to close that gap some. Next up, we have six cauldrons so far. I didn't use all of my iron, but I wanted to have some cauldrons already ready, even though we only have free lava right now so that we could pretty quickly expand uh, without sacrificing any further resources. We'll get a row of dripstone blocks right here, break this torch, and we're actually gonna put a block right there so the lava doesn't spill out because we only have three lava right now, so that's where it'll live. I'll set up two dripstone blocks right here, get our lava ready, and then we're going to go bloop, blop, bleep, and now we're set up there. Just get some pointed dripstone right here. And for now, I will go ahead and fill in the rest of this row as well. So that as these cauldrons fill up with lava, we will be able to add more lava up here very easily. And with that, the lava farm has begun. Of course, it isn't done yet. As I said, it will expand over time as it starts to generate our lava. But this is essentially all that we need to do until that starts happening. So I'm not quite finished with the build yet. I do want to go back up and build a nice path that goes from our house to the mine and then to the tower. So let's go ahead and do that. Here we go. So bit of a lit 
pathway over to the tower. We've got a mixture of dirt path, coarse dirt, and podzol, and using the natural grass as well as a bit of a texture piece too. Generally the path is the thickest part and then the rest of the blocks are kind of just accents. So I think this presents us with a much safer uh, and more direct intentional route to the tower. With that said, we now have actually enough gold to use the gold pedestal at the top. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, gold block acquired. Let's head back to the tower. Okay. So it looks like this must be the actual true top of the tower. So we have two red pedestals and two iron pedestals. So we might actually have enough resources to use all four of these right away. We'll go down back to the house and take a look. It's a little dim in here, but the candle should be enough to prevent mobs from spawning on these stairs. All right, let's take a look and see if we have enough resources here. So redstone, definitely not worried about. We have plenty even after we use 18 for two blocks. The iron, uses half of our iron to use both of them. But we do already know that there's still lots of iron back over in the meadow caves, which we're going to return to anyway to explore the trial chamber for. So I don't feel too bad about using this right now. Actually getting to take a look at the tower now from the first time from the outside with it completed here. It looks pretty cool. Actually might be neat to see it from the village, but we'll check that out later. And obviously not fully completed, we still have these two pedestals to figure out. But let's take a look here and see what these unlock. I think we'll do the iron first. Okay. Seems like just a little bit of a smelting area here. Oh, there's hoppers coming from the furnaces into these droppers, which I guess are just supposed to be the storage for it, rather than any actual like redstone use. Okay, interesting. Perhaps not worth the iron block, but that's okay. Okay, this one is a bedroom. Is there anything in these chests and barrels? No, we do have two more candles though. And a nice look down at the village, actually. I'm gonna break this. Yeah, beautiful look down at the village. Oh, I still need to take care of that log. <laughs> Um, but, okay, cute. We may consider moving up here. I guess that kind of depends on what else is up here. What other purpose there is. But let's try the blocks of redstone now. Oh, right in my face. So we have a cake here on a nice little kind of dining table looking out, or desk, uh, looking out at the river. And it's sparkling, which is interesting. I don't really know what that's about. I don't really want to break it, and we're not hungry right now, so I guess we'll have to investigate that later. Okay, and last block of redstone. Oh, what is this? This is not an arcane pedestal. Right-clicking it is not doing anything. Well, it came with a book, so let's take a look at that. I have made great progress on my new device, which I have decided to call a kaleidoscope. Previously, such machines could only transmute iron into gold, but I have been able to expand its capabilities to cover most metals and minerals commonly used in magic, such as arcane locks and the like. This comes at the cost of requiring a much larger supply of one such material, a full cubic meter, to be placed into the glass case. Unfortunately, I have not been able to make the process deterministic. And, of course, because the machine relies on the natural magics of this area, it requires 24 hours to recharge after use. Eventually, I expect to make progress on that in particular as my experiments at the pond continue. Okay, a lot of thick lore in here, but this book is called Kaleidoscope Research, and unlike the other book, is written by an ancient wizard rather than by an unknown. So it's possible that this book was written by the original owner of the tower. So this block is called a kaleidoscope. And if I'm understanding correctly, it sounds like we can place a block of iron in the middle here, and it'll turn it into gold in the glass here, and it'll turn it into gold. 
I feel like we do have enough iron. Let's go ahead and actually give that a try. And actually, now that I'm hungry, we can try and see what this cake is all about. Okay, well, I ate two slices and nothing happened. It is still sparkling, so still not really sure what that's about. I guess I could try and break it. What could be the difference? Okay, so it stopped sparkling and we got a new cake when I broke it. So probably the intent is, yeah, if you eat the whole thing, then it comes back. But it stopped sparkling now, so it probably isn't going to come back again which is unfortunate. As for the kaleidoscope, I forgot to craft the iron into a block, so I will go ahead and make a crafting table and put it, uh, I guess here. Oh, well, there goes that block. <laughs> okay, let's put this in the case. Okay, I misunderstood. So it said they used to, where'd it go? Uh, okay. It used to turn iron into gold, but now it covers most metals and minerals commonly used in arcane locks, so for the pedestal. So this is a way to turn some of my extra materials into different things that could be used for the arcane locks. I saw an emerald block in there. Uh, I don't remember if I saw a diamond block, but if I did, hopefully that is a way that we could get that without having to mine a whole bunch of diamonds, or better yet, without having to use the, a whole bunch of diamonds um, and sacrifice them rather than turn them into tools and stuff. But for now, we have a block of redstone, which we don't immediately need, but it's possible most of the pedestals have revealed at least one more pedestal each time we've used it. So it's possible those other two that are still left will reveal more pedestals, which might require the redstone. At worst, we can turn it into something else. In fact, okay, so just making sure I understood, the book said it requires 24 hours to recharge. So we'll have to wait until the next day to turn this redstone into something else. I'm going to keep it on me instead of leave it here so that we can make sure we're only using it when we actually want to. But first things first, we're going to get rid of that log. So let's see if I jump up here. Okay, yeah. So if I start pillaring up from here, should be able to reach that. Okay, now that that eyesore is essentially gone, those leaves will decay shortly, I think we're going to go ahead and start clearing some way for the villager breeder. We're going to build it over here, kind of in the middle of the village. This little gap here already serves as a convenient place, so we can just cut down the surrounding trees, make some room, uh, and those logs will of course also be resources that we use to build the breeder. Okay, once all these leaves clear away, I believe that will be plenty of room for our villager breeder. I'm going to build it as like a building, put it in like a facade, and I think that will end up looking really nice rather than trying to bury it and hide it. So we do have still some resources to collect, but it is getting late, so we're going to get ready to go to sleep, and then first thing in the morning, we're going to head up to the tower up there and use the kaleidoscope block again. First, though, I am going to plant some mega taiga trees here because I believe I'm going to need just a bit more logs. And I'm also going to get some sweet berries because we are low on food. Sweet berries aren't the most nutritious thing to eat, but it's what we have available for now. Okay, let's grab our redstone block and head over to the tower. Okay, so... It has been a bit more than 24 hours, so if I understood the book correctly last time, we can place this in here. Oh my goodness. Well, it is working. It's working as expected. We can put any of the blocks that can be used for arcane pedestals, it seems like, into here. It'll turn into something else, except because it is random, it has a chance to turn into the exact same thing. So, basically useless for the moment. Once again, I think I am going to take this because I don't want it to be used up without my knowledge, without me actively choosing to use it. So we'll have to check on this tomorrow and hope that we get something actually usable. It would be nice if we could get an emerald block out of it, if not the diamond or 
the amethyst presumably, but I haven't seen either of those, I've just seen the emerald. We do still need a fair amount more blocks for our villager breeder. Most of them are wood, so I think while we're waiting for those spruce saplings to grow, I think we'll go down and get some stone blocks. Ideally, I think I want to use some tuff for part of the villager breeder, so we'll go down a little bit deeper and collect some of that. First time actually using our new mine build to access our mine. We can come down here and see, oh wow, holy cow. So we've already got, all three of our cauldrons have already started producing lava. We don't need to start smelting it yet, so I think I will put maybe two of them up here. Let's put this water somewhere safe, right there. And actually I do need some of the dripstone blocks from the house, so let me go grab those real quick. So we'll put this block here instead. I'm gonna break this, or place this, break that, and place that for a moment. Put this in my offhand. Lava. Actually, I want this in my lava. No. So that's two more lava slots filled in for now. I also brought a barrel down that I'm going to go ahead and place here. And I'll gather this lava and put it away, along with an extra bucket and the dripstone, so that we have basically everything we need to continue expanding this or just to store the lava that gets generated uh, for later use. With that said, it's time to head down and collect some tough. Okay, back down in the pit where we saw the diamonds or grabbed the diamonds last time under the water there, I left this iron here and there is a little bit more around the area too. So I think I'll just grab some of that because we are getting low uh, and then we'll start grabbing the tough. Sixty-four tough should be good. Our iron pickaxe is almost out, so I'm just gonna grab some of these ores until it breaks, and then we will go back to the house. Okay, that'll do it. We'll just leave that there. Add a torch, and let's head back up. And we already have some more lava, so we'll go ahead and take that too. It's nighttime now, so we'll go ahead and go to sleep, and then in the morning we'll try the kaleidoscope again. Once again, across the path to the tower, up the stairs, past the pedestals, and to the kaleidoscope. Let's try this again. Oh, okay. Okay, so we got a gold block out of that. We don't have a lot of immediate use for it, but what we also saw is that diamond blocks can appear from this. So we just want to keep our eyes peeled for that. It looks like one of our mega taiga trees has sprouted. Ooh, a couple of them have grown. Excellent. So we'll go ahead and chop these down. Making extra sure that we get the top block this time. Oh, and the third one sprouted while we were chopping that down. Perfect. All right, mega taiga trees chopped. We have tons of logs at this point. I believe plenty for our villager breeder. I do want just a little bit more stone, not a whole, whole bunch. I'll probably just mine some cobblestone off camera, get it smelted up with our new lava, and then we'll get to building. Okay, now that the build is done, it's just a matter of making it actually work. There's still a couple more steps to do. First, we have to make this upper kind of balcony section an actual farm, till the farmland and such, plant the potatoes. And then we need to go and hunt down some villagers. Now, of course, since this is a village, there were plenty of villagers when we arrived, but by now, a lot of them may have gotten themselves stuck 
wandered away or just been killed by zombies and stuff in the night. So we will need to make sure there are still some alive and then figure out how to transport them here. First up though, we need to climb on up here. I'll break this for now and till this farmland. And actually before we can till the farmland, uh, this block right here is a stair block. So we're just going to waterlog it. There is a slab underneath it so the water doesn't spill out. And then we need to go ahead and till this dirt and plant potatoes. Unfortunately, that's all that we have right now and all we have are potatoes. Hopefully soon we'll be able to get some carrots. That'll be just a little bit better, but it will work for the breeder purposes in the meantime. Let's go ahead and break on in here, close this trap door so we can get across, uh, and let's go ahead and place our beds in here. Okay, we'll just replace this trap door in such a way that we can walk through it. Close that, close this, or open and close. So now, once the villagers are in place, they'll start to farm these potatoes and over time start to spawn new baby villagers, which will walk through this hole, they'll pathfind over to the beds, fall down this hole, and that will take them here to the interior where they'll fall into this water safely and then be stuck back there. They will be unable to pathfind over these rails and of course the fences, so that will keep them trapped in while also making it easy for us to transport them with minecarts later to the inevitable trading hall. Let's place a couple more cobblestone blocks like this. And now it's just a matter of finding the villagers and getting them up into the farm section. Of course, the more challenging intermediate step between those two is figuring out how to transport the villagers over here at all. So for that, let's go ahead and take a look at what our iron situation is looking like. Okay, so two ingots and 14 raw iron. That's going to be 16 iron once smelted which will be enough for 32 rails, but not enough to make a minecart with. So really, we only have about 16 rails to work with, plus one minecart to transport the villagers up to the farm. So we may need some additional intermediate step, and that, I believe, is where we can use these grindstones. In theory, if we can break their original workstation blocks and keep forcing them to try and pathfind to these workstation blocks, they will be lured up to the farm, and eventually they'll pick the composters for the workstation block, and we can trap them in there. So let's go around the village and see if we can find some villagers to work with. I want to make sure we have at least two. And if we can find two that don't have jobs, of course, that would be easier. Um, oh, oh, these two can't have jobs. Okay, well, they can stay there then. <laughs> um, did I check over here when I first got to the village? This doesn't look super familiar. Uh, there's nothing in here anyway. This house down here doesn't look familiar either. Oh, hello. Um, two leather workers. Oh, and a chest with some bread. Nice. Um, so they clearly have these as their job blocks. So we can take those. They'll lose their jobs. So let's start by doing this. Let one of them out at a time. And we'll bring them over. So come on over to this job block, sir. Good. So you're a weaponsmith now. Place another one here. Break this. Awesome. Okay, this is working great. And then the breeders just over there. Okay, I think it's too late in the day for them to be working now. And that's why he's not pathfinding as I want him to. So we'll need to kind of keep an eye on him and then go to sleep, wait till morning and wait till he starts working correctly again. I'm going to break this too, just for ease. And we're just going to set up a bunch of grindstones up here. And then hopefully the villagers will find their way over there. I'll even break this one over here too. Hold on to that and we'll replace them later. Actually, we'll probably use them for the uh, trading hall later. Here, okay, there's one. So he's thinking about a job site. Come over here. Excellent. And then down here. Oh, oh, he's finding something. Let's go. Break these. Get up there. Beautiful. Okay, for now, trap him in there while we work out a way to get the next one. In fact, let's do that. And I'm going to basically... Oh, wait, this is a whole different house. What? Oh, a cartography house. Ooh. Well, we're definitely going to want that cartography table. Some maps. Neat. Okay, cool. This is a nice, uh, nice house. Break this chest. Break the cartography table. Okay, come here. 
Over here. Okay, good. And then over here. Good. And then if I break this. Excellent. Great. Okay. Villager breeder is operational. We have two villagers up there, some potatoes for them to farm, beds in place for the baby villagers, and a holding chamber down below for them. It's gonna be a little while before it starts producing villagers, so in the meantime, we're going to head up to the tower, do the kaleidoscope block one more time, and then make our way over to the trial chamber. I went ahead and held on to that gold block that we got earlier and just crafted some of our extra redstone into another redstone block. I'm kind of hoping that the kind of block that gets placed in the kaleidoscope has no bearing on which block we get out of it, but I really have no idea. With that said, let's go ahead and try this out. Oh, oh, okay, interesting. So this is the first time we're seeing an amethyst-related block. So that does suggest I was correct that the block down there, uh, the pedestal, is amethyst purple. What's interesting is it's a cluster, not a solid amethyst block. So I guess that means that it's just the shards that we need. Luckily, we got four of them, so I guess we can try an amethyst block too if this doesn't work. Okay, first let's try an amethyst. Okay, not quite. Um, let's craft this up into a block. And how about a block of amethyst? Okay, no. Well, in that case, I'm kind of at a loss. The kaleidoscope gave us an amethyst cluster, so we know we're on the right track. But if it's not an amethyst shard and it's not an amethyst block, could it be that we need the amethyst cluster? That we need to silk touch it? That would be so annoying, especially because we just broke it. Well, I guess we'll hold on to it for now. Maybe I'll even try and, and leave this here and we can see if that does anything when we get back from the trial chamber. Yeah, that's going to require just more experimentation, I think. Huh. It's already nearly nighttime once again, so I'm just going to clean up my inventory, go to sleep, and then head over to the meadow, which is over there, and head down to the trial chamber. One of these days we'll make a bridge, but at least for now, it is convenient because we do need some water. It's helpful to have a water bucket when going in a combat situation. Okay, going into this cave in the side of the hill again, descending down into the dripstone cave, into the underwater cave, and down into the lava ravine. Holy cow, that's a lot of mobs. Um, okay, so we're going to enter from over there. All right, let's see. Breaking in, hello strays, that's not that bad. Ow. Okay, hello. Ow, ow. Come on. <laughs> okay. Are we nearly clear? No, there's still a few in here. They're fighting each other for the moment. Oh, there's another one coming up. Okay. Completing some of the trial spawners, but I can't even get in this room. Okay. I think I can get in now, which is something. And now I can deal with the strays a little bit more actively. Are the others? Okay, here we go. Alright, a big potato. Um, let's loot these chests real quick. I think we'll do protection and thorns. An iron axe, not as good as the one we have. The saddle. Uh, feather falling is cool. Protection two boots I'll take. I don't have a horse, so I'm going to leave the horse armor for now, but this shield will help repair my current shield. Okay, some minor enchantments. Can't really see the enchantment glit anymore since they turned it down, but either way, we are getting beefed up. These trial spawners have also unlocked some items, but I hear some more strays, so we'll need to be careful. Let's close some of these, actually. So we have a staircase over there, some more arrows and bones and such, and then we could go down there and fight some more strays. I think for the moment, I'm going to go this way. Okay. This appears to be the corridor, and we have some husks. Nice. I like some melee mobs. Cornered a little bit. Hello. Okay, another trial key. We're playing in 1.20.4 with experimental features, so we don't have trial vaults in this world, so these trial keys are useless, but they're still pretty cool to get. Okay, so I hear some mobs up 
there or possibly down there. Let's check this barrel. Ender pulls are cool. There is still plenty of loot in this room. They must be below me, and we seem technically safe. I'm going to take this tough for now. Oh, a bow. It's almost broken, but cool. Uh, I'm actually going to take some of these candles, too, just to add a few more to the tower. Break these pots as well, because they can have loot in them, including amethyst shards, which we now know we don't need. Okay, we've got some more up here. Is this another skeleton room? Ah, I mean, strays are better than poison arrow skeletons, which can also spawn, but it's still annoying the absolute huge number we have to deal with. Better falling efficiency. I'll take the fire protection. Some emeralds is nice. What's in this chest? A diamond axe. Okay, I'll take that. That's fine. <laughs> and I'm not going to go any further up there for now. I know what I'm about. <laughs> and it's not, you know, dozens of strays. And I know I heard husk elsewhere. So there are other rooms and, and potentially more interesting chambers. Oh, hello. Found him. Ow. Okay, so yes, this is the corridor. Let's clear the husks here and then we'll start gathering the loot. Ow. Okay, it's just another key. Uh, so let's grab that. Emeralds. Gold. Inventory is getting full, which is why I brought an extra chest. So we have more over there. And over there. We have a door over here. I checked that, right? Yeah. We have a door over here. And then up here is where we came from. So I'm going to place a chest over here. And this will just be kind of our, our intermediate storage until we're ready to leave. And then we'll decide what we want to take with us on this particular trip. So now let's head down and see what else we want to explore. This is kind of maze-like, what? Oh, interesting. Oh, this room is so cool. Okay, kind of like a flooded little chamber here. Is there anything back here? Yes. Oh, nice. Oh, that's awesome. Just a whole diamond block. I know this loot is placeholder, but holy cow, this is exactly what we need to unlock more of the tower. I can't believe that we just found just a whole diamond block. I was expecting a couple of diamonds from the trial spawners, but this is so perfect. Let's see what else we can find here. Trial spawner, another stray spawner. Hello? Okay. Oh my gosh. That's a lot. Okay, come on. All right. I oh. Okay, cool. Fighting, fighting. Ow. Okay. Are you dead yet? No. Trial spawner still open. Husks down there. That's fine. Oh, it's because there's a stray down there. I hear it. This is probably for the breeze. Yep, there's one over there. Magma blocks. Oh, hello. Oh, all right. What was that? Did that... Okay, I got the emeralds. Husks, great. Take care of those. I'm sure we'll get at least one more breeze. Okay, yeah, he's up there. I see ya. I'm busy. Oh good, he's dying. They're, they're not immune to magma blocks? That's so funny. <laughs> Ow. Ooh, golden carrot. Cool. There we go. Okay, get the emeralds up there. And let's see what loot we're working with. I know I saw a chest. Is it over there? Oh, it's over here. Some more armor. That's pretty good. Pickaxe is nice. Fortune pickaxe, that's awesome. Put that away for now. Uh, these are not substantially better than what I have. So this is kind of where we branched off from the main corridor right there. Let's see what's up here. Oh, okay, like a little starter room. Some more food. I don't need the rotten flesh. I'm going to leave these beds here for now. Honestly, there's so much more to this trial chamber. I feel like for the moment, I'm ready to leave. We've gotten everything that we wanted, and now we know we can come back here for even more loot. And, you know, of course, just the loot from, comes with the trial spawners. So let's take a look at our hall here. Okay, I think that's a pretty good hall. We've got the diamond block, emeralds, trial keys, even though we don't really need them. Plenty of other stuff that I think will be really nice to have. 
So let's go ahead and try to make it out of here before these trial spawners reset. Okay, very successful trip. There's clearly so much more to this trial chamber, but for now, let's go ahead and return home so we can check out what the new expansions to the tower will be. Thankfully, it's daytime, so we can make our way back home safely. Oh, gosh, look at how cool that tower looks. And even our house from here, the village breeder. Yeah, loving how this area is coming together. Okay, we are back home. Inventory is sorted. Emeralds have been crafted into emerald block. So that means we now have two pedestals to unlock. Let's see what happens. I feel so embarrassed. I had paused my recording to answer a Discord message and I didn't get the emerald pedestal being activated. But I'll kind of dramatically recreate it for you. I activated the pedestal, looked around, didn't see any obvious change until I was looking at the tower and realized that this sort of balcony thing was new. Coming up to the balcony, past the diamond pedestal and the amethyst pedestal, we have this, which is a nice little garden area. Curiously, there's a wither rose here. Now, I haven't looked at the book yet, so let's go ahead and read that together. I should have known attempting to clear away the dark cloud from this place would prove fruitless. One arcane lock will not be enough to keep him at bay, and nor can I alone forever. I must conceal this whole place with as many layers of magic as I can muster to keep him from being freed, yes, and to keep others from succumbing to that same darkness. This book is called Forgotten Diary Number 4, once again written by Unknown. So it seems to open up more of the lore. It's apparent that they believed that this tower was evil and that's what caused them to create these arcane locks. The Wither Rose seems to be a good indication towards that, but we don't really know a whole lot else about the situation. We do still have another pedestal here, so maybe that will yield more information. Okay, this one, I'm fairly confident I am actually recording, so hopefully this works. Okay, a whole separate wing. We'll have to take a look at what this looks like from outside. We have a small enchanting setup. Looks like a mixture of normal bookshelves and uh, chiseled bookshelves. We can put our books in. And this enchanting table, which seems a little bit different, looks to have a lot more particles and such going on. Let's take a look at this book and see what it has to say. The magics in this room have proven particularly challenging to seal away. While the tomes here contain ample ability to enchant items as any mage would, the tower's owner found a way to allow for this room to enchant people as well. While an entire block of lapis lazuli is no great sacrifice, I fear that acquiring such power may come at a higher cost. This book is called Forgotten Diary Number 5. It's also written by Unknown. So we have Forgotten Diaries Number 6, Number 5, and Number 4. We're acquiring them mostly backwards and also a little bit out of order, which is interesting. More importantly for our purposes, it seems like this is able to enchant people. It looks like the normal enchanting setup uh, when I click the table but there's these blue particles here and clicking them says you need a block of lapis lazuli to enchant yourself. We have plenty lapis lazuli so let's go get one. Let's go see what that uh, enchanting table has for us. So again if we click the enchanting table normally it works normally but if we hover our cursor over these blue particles here okay it took our block Oh, interesting. So by enchanting people, it seems like it means apply a permanent infinite potion effect. Specifically, we have infinite water breathing, which is going to be super nice for that underwater cave. We'll be able to get all that iron and stuff that's down there super duper easily uh, and potentially, you know, allow us to explore other underwater caves with ease. So that is incredibly powerful. That is so awesome. Now, of course, although we have two villagers and some potatoes up in the villager breeder right now, 
it still isn't quite at the efficiency we need it at, and ideally I want to start having some villagers get spawned while we're building our trading hall. So we're going to start by making sure that our potatoes are fully grown and ideally that they have a good stock of them first. We do have quite a few bones that we should be able to use, so let's go grab those. For getting up there, we can just build a cobblestone staircase, which are going to break on the way up so that nothing follows us. And then when we're ready to leave, we can just jump down where the baby villagers come out. We're going to start with 63 bone meal, so we'll start sprouting these up. Okay, so we grew all the potatoes, replanted them, gave them the potatoes, and then used the rest of our bone meal that we had from that stack to just plant the rest of the potatoes. At this point, I'm sure they still don't have quite enough to start making new villagers yet, but that should be enough to kind of get us started so that while we're collecting resources and building the trading hall, they'll start to generate some that we can then transfer over. So down here in the main room of the breeder, where the baby villagers will drop down and grow up, we do already have some minecart tracks set up so that we can easily transfer them to minecarts, so that then we can then transport them to the trading hall. However, we probably do still want it pretty close by. So I'm thinking we'll kind of go with a bit of like a, a longhouse type situation, but just in this little median here between these two roads, we'll cut down these trees, clear away these trap doors, the campfires and stuff that are in the way, and then the trading hall can go right here and we'll just build a little minecart track to transport villagers straight from here over to the trading hall right across the road. So let's start off by clearing this area out. All right, I cleared out a little extra space over on the sides here, just in case we need it, and just so that it looks a little bit nicer once we have the trading hall built, uh, so we can see it a little bit better. Oh, looks like our villagers are producing some babies. Oh, I think I just saw one spawn. Yep, so it won't be long before it path finds. Oh, and it fell right down. Let's go check it out. Here we go. So we've got a little baby villager down here. He'll start growing up. And like I said, he should be completely unable to pathfind uh, outside of this gate here, thanks to the uh, rails. And I think I even heard they might be getting another one going. So hopefully it won't be long before these are grown up. By the time we finish the trading hall, they should be ready to transport over. Before that, though, we do still have a few more resources to go and collect. Primarily, I want this building to be a little bit lighter on logs. We did get 61 logs out of it, um, but I don't want this to use necessarily a lot of wood. Ideally, I'd like a lot of stone. So we're going to collect some more stone blocks, some andesite, and I think some deep slate as well. It might be really nice, especially for the floor. But then we'll get going on building the trading hall, and then we'll start transporting villagers over. In addition to the stone and deep slate and andesite that we need for the build, we're also running low on iron, which is going to be necessary for the rails to transport the villagers. So I think it's time we put our water breathing enchantment to good use and head down to those flooded caves that we know are under the meadow where we saw lots of iron. Okay, so nice, so cool to be able to explore down here without having to worry about air. Obviously, we're going to mine a little bit slower. I didn't bring any doors, but we should be able to grab all this iron super easily. So we did lose a little bit of iron over the course of that trip uh, just due to it being on the walls of this aquifer here. However, I did forget just how big this cave is. If we look out along here, I mean, there's so much more to this cave that I think we will go ahead and try to explore here because I also forgot there are still the diamonds as well hanging kind of above the trial chamber, plus all this other iron that's just kind of around. So we'll do a little bit of searching for kind of both of those things, as well as collecting the deep slate and such that we need for our build.
And there's our diamond. Oh, hold on. Yeah. Just walking over to the diamonds that we saw. And directly above it is an amethyst geode. As a reminder, we're pretty sure we need an amethyst cluster for the last pedestal in the tower. Oh, there's two diamonds. Nice. I didn't realize that. Let's grab those. And we will climb our way up to the geode. Of course, we could pillar up there, but since we need the deep slate anyway, we'll go ahead and just make a staircase. Oh, ah, that was not smart. Okay, let's try that again. <laughs> I took for granted that there was a floor. There was not a floor. Okay, so let's come on in here. We don't want to break any budding amethyst. Get a torch placed down. Nice. Now it looks like... Oh, there's only the one. Okay. So we don't have a silk touch pickaxe right now. However, our iron axe does have silk touch thanks to mine treasure. So hopefully this works. It does. Great. Okay. So we got our amethyst cluster and we know we can come back here if we end up needing more. Right now, there aren't any other clusters that are grown, so it's not like we could get any right now anyway. I do see some more diamonds down there, and I think that should be safe enough to get to. Nice. Any more? Nope. That's okay. We need the deep slate anyway. We could use more iron as well, so we still have some more mining to do down here. There's some diamond over there. Oh, quite a few, actually. We can go ahead and head that direction. Oh, even more hiding behind this pillar here. Thinking about it now, we're probably just a little bit too low to be finding a lot of iron. We actually, I think, need to head a little bit higher up again. There's a lot of mobs spawning anyway. We do need some tough while we're down here, so we'll go ahead and grab a bunch of this too. Okay, yeah, see, I think iron is most common right around where the stone turns into deep slate. We've got some right there, got there and there, lots along the ceiling here, and some over there too. We have 64 iron and some change. I think that's probably plenty. Rails are fairly inexpensive and there are a lot of mobs here. We will need some more as we craft more minecarts later, but we're not going to have that many villagers to start out with, so that can be a task for later. We mostly at this point just need a little more deep slate, so I think I'm going to make my way back closer to the entrance, where hopefully it will be just a little bit safer. Oh, nice. <laughs> Don't see that every day. Oh my gosh. Holy cow. What? What was that? Like six diamonds? Six diamond ore? I can't even keep track because I was using my fortune pickaxe. Okay, I think that should be plenty. We did get a couple of mine treasures here, but they didn't really have anything useful, so I didn't even take anything from them. By this point, I think we should be pretty close to having everything we need. I'm just gonna head back home and uh, start planning out the build. And there we go. I decided to go with a bit more of a factory theme here. I've been doing a lot of these kind of like arched roofs uh, and I wanted to try something different. So we've got some nice smokestacks coming up from the top, utilize some tough for the top. Like I said, very little wood, mostly just kind of as an accent. 
And then we have this sort of uh, mixed stone down here for the bottom portion. If we come inside, we can see that we're not quite finished yet. We have all of the spaces for the villagers to sit. They're going to stay in their minecarts as we transport them in here. And then we have dirt here for the moment, which is where we'll place the rails to get the villagers in place. And then we'll replace that with their respective job blocks. So with the plan in place, let's go see how many villagers we have ready to transport. Oh, goodness. Okay, so we have three adults and a baby already here. That is awesome. So we'll just need to make a couple of minecarts and then we'll start trying to transport them over. So in the interest of not having a rail just crossing our road here, or at least having it look kind of nice, I think I'm going to have the rail kind of arc around and in down here, and we'll have kind of a, a little crossing section here. So let's actually plan from this side where that's going to go. I think we'll plan on this being our entrance. Yeah, I think that works well. And then for ease, we'll put the first villager right into that slot there, the next one here, and so on. Okay, so let's try and nab one of these guys. Okay, cool, so we got him ready to go. Push him through there, nice. All right, first villager's in place. So now we simply move over to here and do the next one. I also think what I'm going to do, I'm going to break this, place a door here and here. We can leave these rails here. And I'm going to put an extra barrel in here out of reach of the villagers to put any extra rails in. Okay, break this and this, and this and this. So I think this one is going to be our Fletcher so that we can start to trade sticks for emeralds. This one is going to be a mason for much the same reason, but with so that we can trade clay for emeralds. And then these two are going to be toolsmiths to start with. And then the next two that we get will make armorers. We're also going to put some trap doors over the top of these just so it looks a little bit nicer. And then all the rest of these materials will be put away in this barrel. And that largely completes our trading hall. We have four villagers with more on the way, thanks to our joint villager breeder just back there. So once we start leveling these up, which I think I'll just do off camera because it's not very interesting, then we should have access to diamond tools. Before that though, it's time to see if this amethyst cluster will work on the purple pedestal back in the tower. Okay, if this doesn't work, I have no idea what we're supposed to do here. Okay, cool, it did work. So it looks like another wing, just like our library back there. And okay, so as suspected, we do have more pedestal. We have another emerald one, another diamond one, and another amethyst one. We also have a new book here, so let's take a look at that. The teleportation magics here are incredible. For how terrible he was, this tower's original owner was undoubtedly skilled. Using this enchanted spyglass, I can visit each of the floating islands around the tower simply by gazing upon them. By gazing back upon the tower, I can return here as well. This will be very useful for ensuring that Arcane Lock remains intact. This book is called Forgotten Diary Number 3. So we are still going backwards. We're uncovering a little bit more about the mysterious unknown author's thoughts about the original tower's owner. Apparently he was terrible. But there was some pretty powerful magic going on here. Let's put this book back. So we do have this enchanted spyglass, indeed. It doesn't seem to be doing anything. And the book also mentioned floating islands. There haven't been before, but I guess it's possible that when we used that pedestal, some appeared, just like how we didn't see the balcony from the green pedestal down here. So let's take a look around and see. It doesn't look like it. This is the library here, and if we come around here, we can see this new room, which has a lot more glass going on, even up there. Pretty cool. But no sign of any- Oh! Um, okay. We are back up in the bedroom. I was just looking for some floating islands, which I don't see. But when I looked at the tower, at the top of the tower, it teleported me up here. That's pretty neat. I think worth some more experimentation. 
Also, I sort of noticed as I was editing the last episode, but I didn't realize that uh, the cake is sparkling again, which suggests that it will regenerate again. So maybe it's on a similar kind of 24 hour clock as the kaleidoscope here. But I want to test this enchanted spyglass some more. So if I'm looking at the tower while I'm holding it, nothing seems to be happening. I can use the spyglass to look at, you know, essentially anything. It doesn't teleport me, you know, to the meadow or anything. But let's try looking at the tower again. Oh, okay, yep. So that does seem to just teleport me to the tower. And I suspect each of these pedestals will unlock the floating islands. They're probably locked behind the, these arcane locks. And then the enchanted spyglass will let me teleport to them too. I don't know if I feel comfortable using diamonds or emeralds on these pedestals, at least not right away, especially because we just finished our trading hall. So I want to make sure that we can upgrade our villagers and get diamond gear or see what diamond gear we can get before I start wasting any more diamonds on these pedestals. But we could pretty easily go back down and just grab another amethyst cluster. So I think I will try and do that and see if we can get a floating island to appear. For now, I'm going to put this uh, enchanted spyglass away so I don't lose it. So that's sort of where our main entrance is, but I think the easiest way to get there is probably going to be through this hole that we carved earlier. And down this waterfall. Um, yeah, because that's the geode right there. Cool. Got a bit of a skeleton to deal with. First time using the bow now. Oh, and it only had one use anyway, so I guess that's that. <laughs> probably should light up this area, since we probably will be back here a couple of times. Oh, come on. There we go. Easy. Yeah, just in case we need to get more amethyst clusters uh, so that it's easy and safe to access this area. Okay, back inside here, hopefully one of these clusters is fully grown or will be grown soon. It looks like we're not quite there yet. This is still a medium one, I think. So since we have to wait for one of these clusters to grow up anyway, I'm going to go ahead and just mine up around these budding amethyst blocks just to open up more growing spaces. And then hopefully by the time we're mostly finished with that, we should have a cluster that we can mine up. Okay, I think that's pretty much as clear as it can get. It's a little bit inconvenient when some of them spawn, you know, right next to each other or diagonal to each other because you can't clear quite all of the spawning spaces. But now it's just a matter of waiting for one of these to grow. There are a couple that I think are at their second to last stage here, those two up in the corner primarily. So I'll probably just wait here until we get one and then we will return to the tower. I suppose that if I really wanted to, I could go and mine some more and find any diamonds or iron or even go to the trial chamber. But honestly, I am just pretty excited to see what the new amethyst pedestal will unlock. So I don't want to get sidetracked. So I'm realizing now it probably would have been faster to just try to use the kaleidoscope block and hope that we got an amethyst cluster out of that, or just do the diamond or emerald pedestal first. But in the long run, it really didn't take that long of waiting to get one of these grown. It was already large anyway, so it really was just a matter of time. So let's go ahead and silk touch it up. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't think it was so close to the edge, but I did not like how, uh, how quickly it was falling. Okay. So we've got our amethyst cluster, let's head back up. Ah! Oh my gosh! I was running so fast, it snuck up on me. Where are you going, dude? Come here. Yeah! That was the sneakiest baby zombie I've ever seen. I didn't even hear it. I was sitting in that amethyst geode for so long and I didn't hear one peep out of that zombie. Okay, I'm pretty sure it's this waterfall. Uh, yes, looks like it. Oh, it is exactly sundown, so let's get back to the tower quickly. It's too bad I didn't think to bring the enchanted spyglass. We probably could have used that to teleport back over there faster. We'll just go to sleep first. Oh, we have a visitor in our courtyard. Oh, he's leaving. Okay, I hope you had fun. Okay, back into this glass room here. Oh, looks like an amethyst block up there. Cute. All right, let's try out this pedestal. Okay. So as expected, we got a floating island very clearly out this window. So that is awesome. Uh, let's try out the enchanted spyglass. Oh, okay. Yep. Nice and easy. 
teleports us directly to the island. And it looks like we have a nether portal here. It's not complete, it's got some crying obsidian in the way, so we will still need to craft a diamond pickaxe to be able to use it. But that is still super cool. I'm curious if there will be anything interesting on the other side of the nether portal. I don't think there's really any way that could be possible, but who's to say? We also have another golden pedestal here, so it's possible that this will unlock another floating island as well, maybe off in that direction. I did want to get some work done on upgrading the villagers in the trading hall, which ended up being a little more work than I expected. I'll spare you a lot of the details, but to quickly recap, I added some armorers to the trading hall, did a bunch of mining for iron and coal to trade to the weaponsmiths and armorers, found a copper vein, which was cool, but left it alone for now, fully moved up into the tower from my old starter house, made a small water pond below the floating island to more quickly get back down from the tower, did a bunch of trading to level up some of the villagers, mostly for way more iron axes than I will ever need, bought a bow from the Fletcher, fully leveled up one of the weaponsmiths who just had a so-so diamond axe. Oh, and I also found an epic mine treasure. Unfortunately, I wasn't recording when it spawned, but here's what I got out of it. So at this point, I may spend more time off camera in the future trying to level these guys up, but it's really grindy, and frankly, I'm more excited to check out the nether and unlock more of the tower today. Now, first step, of course, is lighting the portal. It looks like there are four crying obsidian blocking some of the frame, so we can't light it. So we will need a diamond pickaxe. For that, let's head back to the tower. We do have plenty of diamonds, but since we know there is at least one more diamond pedestal we need to take care of, I'm not going to use them for any more than we need right now. So we've got our diamond pickaxe. I think I'm going to go ahead and enchant it as well, since we have some spare levels. This will be our first time using the enchanting table for something other than ourselves. Okay, just efficiency four. So not incredible, but that'll do. Maybe at some point we will disenchant it with a grindstone and try again. So now we need some obsidian, and for that I think we will go down to our mine and simply use some of our spare lava. Since we only need four, there's no reason to go all the way over to the meadow, which is the only place that we know a lava pool exists. Conveniently, we do have four cauldrons of lava, so let's prepare a little spot here. And then we'll simply do this. There we go. All right, let's mine this up really quickly. And it is almost nighttime, but we should be able to at least take care of this crying obsidian real quick. All right, let's get the obsidian in place. And we have an unbreaking six flint and steel from a mine treasure. Oh, I didn't realize that gave an advancement. Oh, I see. It's from mine treasure. Well, that's fun. All right, let's head in the nether and see what our nether spawn looks like. Well, we're out in the open, that's nice. I don't like sometimes when you spawn in caves and you have to find out, or like really high up or really down low. We've got a crimson forest way over there. And I see, yep, looks like we have a warped forest over there. Let's get a sense of if there's any nether fortresses or, oh, look over there. We've got a bastion off in the distance, so that's nice, good to know. So we can head there to if we want to get like netherite upgrades, hopefully, or otherwise just trade with piglins. I don't know if we'll plan on fighting the ender dragon very soon, but that's also what we would go to the bastion for. So since we know there is a bastion remnant over there, let's come over here and see if we can find any signs of a nether fortress off in that direction. Oh, what is that? Oh, hold on a second. Is that a pedestal? I was curious if there was going to be anything in the nether related to this tower. Oh, there's a lava fall spilling onto it. But when we didn't see one right away, I figured not. But it looks like there actually is. Looks relatively safe around the area. Ooh, except for this uh, pitfall here. Come on up here. This is actually a really nice nether. I really like the way this is generating here. We're in a pretty safe area. Access to a warp forest, crimson forest. Less relevant when we're not playing new in town, but still cool. So there is an entrance over here. We've got a floor made of magma blocks, a lit nether portal, which is out, which is interesting. We do have a diamond pedestal here, so that does confirm it's related to the tower. And then we also have a book, so let's see what that's about. An eternity to tinker and experiment has proven invaluable, as I expected. 
My time spent in the Nether has given me new insights into both the nature and value of life. These new machines both serve as the fruit of these endeavors and a means to conduct further experiments. I can now safely extract the inanimate pieces of those most curious creatures which stalk the faraway fortresses from the comfort of my own laboratory. Unfortunately, the yield is not as significant as I would hope. It is likely that my staff has had lasting effects on the machines and those they spawn. This book is called Laboratory Progress, or Laboratory Progress, I guess if you prefer, and is written by the ancient wizard, not by the unknown author. So this must have been the ancient wizard's laboratory while he still lived at the tower. The way this book is written comes across a little more sinister than the kaleidoscope research, which does seem to corroborate with what the unknown author was talking about, but we still don't really have a clear picture or the whole story. It looks like there's nothing else here. This place is in ruins, very similar to the abandoned tower. It's clear that the unknown author did lock it up. So we need to come back with a diamond block to see what this place is all about. Since there doesn't appear to be a nether fortress nearby, I'm tempted to devote quite a bit of time to seeing, for one, what's at this laboratory, and then unlocking the tower some more. It seems like that is going to be the bulk of what we're doing today, and I, for one, could not be more excited. Let's head back to our portal, and I think mark a path for us to follow to safely come back next time. We have some ghasts to worry about here. Oh! Haha! <laughs> All right, come here. Nope. Oh, come on. You're so close. You're so close. Ow. Ha ha. Oh, nice. It all dropped right here, too. Uh, sweet. We got a ghast here. Awesome. Pretty sure. Yep, here it is. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and head back to the tower. And something else that I discovered while I was messing around off camera, not only can we use the spyglass to teleport back up to the bedroom, but we can actually teleport to the glass room as well. So that's kind of neat. So we can go back and forth from there to there, or we can go straight to, here we go, uh, the bedroom. Let's have some sparkly cake. Since it's morning now as well, we'll go ahead and see what the kaleidoscope has to offer for us today. Ooh, nice! Free diamond block. Great! So we'll use that when we go to the nether. I also grabbed another gold block so we can unlock the golden pedestal back there at the floating island. We have many pedestals to unlock, but I'm going to go ahead and start with this one. Whoa! Oh gosh, that is sparkly! So we have a sparkly brewing stand, cauldron, and a nether wart here. So we got some free nether wart already growing on soul sand. We don't have to go find a fortress. That is pretty convenient. Brewing stand looks to be pretty normal, although it is already charged. So I wonder if that has anything to do with these sparkles. But at least we know that once this nether wart grows, we'll be able to brew some potions very easily. Let's go ahead and go into the nether. I'm curious if we can teleport down to the lab. That would be nice. Doesn't seem like it. I'm not tracking anything. Yeah, that's unfortunate, but understandable. Make our way back around to the entrance. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. Excellent. And yes, that does seem to have repaired the floor. We have a roof now. Very interesting. We'll have to see what this looks like from the uh, outside, from the portal up there. I don't know that there's any reason to go through this portal, but I guess we can. Oh. Looks like we have a... Ah, I see. Looks like that just fell. Let's just plug that up so that we don't run into any problems. So, now we have a green pedestal over here and a purple pedestal over here. So we'll need another amethyst cluster as well as a, another emerald block. We do have another emerald and diamond pedestal back at the tower still to do as well. So I think we'll go and do those and then come back and check these two out. See what this looks like from the outside out here. I love the windows. And the transition from deep slate to blackstone to stone brick, that's really interesting. Normally you would do kind of like a gradient, but this feels almost like, I don't know, teeth or something? Very spooky. Oh! Ah! Me my bow! Ah, hello! Ah! Oh my gosh, there's too much going on! What is happening? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> okay. I think we're safe from the piglins. Let's take out this ghast. Goodbye, fireball. Oh, nice. I didn't even mean for that to happen. Okay, I think...
think we should be safe to head back now. We'll eat some cake once we're back at the tower. All right, so we ate some cake, and like I suspected, it stopped sparkling and regenerated once again. So once it starts sparkling again, we know that it is safe to eat. So let's see, we need a diamond block and two emerald blocks. We'll start in here. Let's do the emerald one first. I don't see anything out this window. I guess it doesn't necessarily need to be out the window. This one happened to be. Ah, I think that's it up there. Could we reach it from here? Maybe not through the glass. Um, let's come out here. This is going to spook me every time. I literally just thought this was a blaze. <laughs> Okay, so we have another island up there. It looks to already have a house on top of it, too. Uh, here we go. Teleport up. And looks to be a sort of armory. We can see the nether island a little bit better now as well. As well as the whole village. Beautiful. Anyway. So yes, a little bit of an armory in here. We've got a grindstone. Cauldron and villa is nice. That'll be theoretically convenient. Another pedestal, just iron. I think we still have lots left over, so that should be pretty easy to get. Let's see what this book has to say. With that evil defeated, I may finally rest. I have hung up my armor, should I ever need to push him back once again. No longer am I a warrior. I am a guardian. And it is my solemn duty to protect this place. I don't know what followers that ancient lich may have, so I must be prepared to defend this place, both from without and though I pray not, from within. This book is called Forgotten Diary Number 2, once again written by our unknown author. We're getting closer and closer to the truth. This is the first time that we've heard of this ancient lich. I think at this point we can assume that the ancient lich is the ancient wizard, especially with that laboratory back in the nether. So at some point, after building this tower, the ancient wizard became a lich, became evil, and somebody, this unknown author, had to lock him away, as well as the rest of this tower. There's still more to discover, more pedestals to unlock. I think we'll go ahead and do this, and then we'll go and do that diamond pedestal. It is getting late once again, but we should have time to unlock this. Okay. So this must be the Guardian's armor. Uh, we should be able to take it off of here. Yeah, mysterious helmet. Mysterious chest plate. Mysterious leggings. And mysterious boots. They all have armor trim applied to them, and they all seem to have some decent enchantments. Not incredible. Protection 2 looks like, and unbreaking 3 on all of them. And then the helmet has respiration. Chest plate has thorns. Leggings have swift sneak. That's pretty cool and Feather Falling 2 on the boots. So that's pretty nice. Uh, certainly technically better than most of what we're wearing, and we can actually probably combine some of them too, namely the boots. Let's use the anvil to do that here. Oh my gosh, it costs 17 levels. Uh, I think we probably should not do that yet. In that case, I think I like my boots more, but I'm gonna go ahead and wear the rest of the mysterious armor. We'll put these boots back on the armor stand and put the rest of the armor away back in the bedroom. It's a new day, and we know we need an amethyst cluster again, so let's try the kaleidoscope once again. Do a redstone block this time. Oh, come on. Oh, just another emerald block. All right. Let's head down to the... I don't know what we should call this room. It's got a lot of glass. It's where you access the floating islands, and it had the telescope, so let's go with observatory. I think that's a pretty cool name. Ooh, and I think I look pretty cool, too. It's actually my first time in F5 uh, with the armor on. Okay, let's try this pedestal out. Once again, it isn't through this window. It doesn't appear to be in a place we can see. So we'll have to go outside once again. Ah, there it is. Oh, here we go. Ho, 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 whoa. This is a spooky island. And this pedestal is black. This is the first black pedestal we've seen. We've got this big kind of tablet thing here with soul fire behind it. Obsidian, Blackstone crying obsidian. This is an evil island if I ever saw one. Let's take a look at the book. The ancient lich is locked away forevermore. It took all my strength to push him back and then yet more to place that arcane lock upon this place. The island will serve as a grim reminder of my cause. Now I must ensure that his evil does not linger throughout the rest of this wretched place. Though, if I can clear it away, 
Perhaps it will be livable for me. Someone must guard the lock, after all. We finally found Forgotten Diary number one and revealed the entirety of the lore around this tower. So it seems like this pedestal was the first lock that the unknown author made, and it has the ancient lich behind it. And then, after living in the tower for some time, trying to protect the place, he realized that the whole place was evil and decided to lock it all down. That is pretty cool. So, now it's a matter of figuring out how to unlock it. But I think before we do that, we probably want to unlock the rest of the pedestals. And honestly, we probably should be prepared for a boss fight. Let's go to the nether and unlock the pedestal that's over there. This place looks so cool. <laughs> Okay, so there's the purple one. We still need to get an amethyst cluster for that. Let's do the emerald one. Okay, so this must be one of the machines that the book was talking about. We have a lever here. It's got some fire particles around it. Let's go ahead and flick it. Oh, ah! Oh my gosh, okay. Hold on, I was not prepared. Oh, ow, I was blocking. Looks like we got one blaze right out of that, and the lever is sparkling again. So, just for science, let's flick it again. Alright. Okay. So, it seems like it's always going to spawn three blazes. This is a looting iron sword, so the fact that we only got the one blaze rod suggests to me that the blazes aren't actually dropping the loot. It might be the machine itself. That does seem to match what the book said. So it spawns the fortress mobs, and you can fight them off to farm their drop, but the yield is not as effective as it would be if you went and actually fought the mobs. Since this one spawns blazes, and the book mentioned two machines, it's possible that the purple one will unlock a wither skeleton machine. So that'll be pretty neat. Unfortunately, we still don't have an amethyst cluster. We'll need to probably keep trying the kaleidoscope block, and or once again try to wait a long time at the amethyst geode before we can unlock it. Let's go ahead and go through this portal and see if there is anything on the other side. Okay, we're in a taiga biome still. That's not surprising. Oh, is that a... Looks like there's a, an Omega taiga biome over there. So that's kind of neat. Unsurprisingly, although we are in the same or similar biome as home, we aren't actually very nearby. I also don't see anything else around here. So it probably is mostly for decoration than anything else. So, let's go back to our actual portal. Nether Ward is almost grown, so then we can try making some potions. I also think making and enchanting a diamond sword is a good idea at this time. We technically have enough diamonds to make some diamond armor, but since this is the armor that the author wore when they fought the Ancient Lich, my suspicion is it will probably be useful for that fight specifically, so I'm not going to bother with it. With any luck, our armorers will be upgraded enough eventually that we can buy our diamond armor from them. Give the kaleidoscope another try. Just iron. But we'll hold on to that for now. And I suppose we'll go down and check if the amethyst geode has grown another cluster for us. While I'm down here, we can take a look at the pretty much completed tower at this point. I don't know if this is necessarily its best angle, but we can see all the floating islands hanging around it. We can see mostly both of the wings here. I think this is really, really cool. This has been a very fun experience. Okay, let's head back up to the geode. I doubt that anything would have grown since we haven't actually been nearby. And that's not how random ticks work. But maybe we'll get lucky. Oh, it actually... I don't 100% remember, but it does seem we've had some growth since last time. Uh, oh, is that a cluster? I can't tell from this angle. I think it's not. I think that's a large. This is a large as well, I believe. I'm just going to still touch it real quick to confirm. It's a little hard to tell from this angle. Okay, yeah, large amethyst butt. So it's not grown yet. Um, I'm going to move it down here. Oh, I hear another baby. Ah, you're not going to get me this time. Oh, yes, you are. Okay, ow. Can you not, dude? Their tiny hitboxes are so annoying. Oh my gosh. That's twice now at the geode that we've had a baby zombie bother us. What are the odds of that? Once again, just checking all the little, like, hidden nooks and crannies of the geode. It looks like we have several large buds, but no clusters yet. 
So while I could just wait here for one of them to grow again, I think I'd like to do something a little bit more active. Since we're down here anyway, I've been thinking about how I want to build that bridge across the river so that we can get over to these caves and the trial chamber more easily. And I think I'm going to end up using a lot of tough and some copper blocks, which I can steal from the trial chamber. So let's get mining. Oh, holy cow, nice. Let's mine these guys up. I don't have my fortune pickaxe. I'm a liar, yes I do. <laughs> well, we get one with fortune pickaxe. All right, back to mining tough. Couple more diamonds. Let's get these with fortune, or at least one more, I suppose. We don't know if there's, oh, there is more, okay. Get out of my way, I'm trying to go for this one. Ooh, several. Okay, all of that should be plenty of tough. We are going to have to deposit this up at the build site before we can come back down and get the copper blocks that we need, which I think, like I said, we are just going to steal from the trial chamber rather than mine a whole bunch of copper. So it is nighttime once again. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to see the tower super well, just due to the night and the fog. It does look pretty cool though, all the islands floating around. You can see the Armory Island very well, the back of the Portal Island. Again, probably not the best angle, but uh, I think it looks pretty nice. Let's see if the Spyglass can reach from here. It doesn't seem like it. Let's head back, get a little closer, and see if we can get the Spyglass to take us all the way home. Okay, things are a little more clear here, so let's see if this will be close enough. No, still too far. Oh, there we go. Able to reach the island at least. And then we can hop on up here and get to sleep. We got several enchanted books. Some of them are pretty good. We got power four, protection three from this book. Uh, efficiency two from that one. I think that's one we already had. What was this one? Sweeping edge, fire protection, and sharpness three. Very cool. So we can use that to uh, augment our sword, which I think we'll actually go ahead and enchant now as well. So let's see what they have for us for a diamond sword. Unbreaking three, looting two is very nice. We'll go ahead and grab that uh, sweeping and sharpness book and attach that up at the armory island. Come on over here. There we go. Up there. And we have our anvil up here. Nine levels is kind of steep, but not too bad. Uh, and we're going to call this Lich Slayer. I think that's pretty neat. Very nice. All right. So I think where we're going to end up building the bridge is right across here. There's already a nice opening right here. It's pretty near the village, so we'll be able to extend the path down and over here pretty well. We'll probably need to clear a couple of trees on the other side. It's not uh, quite as open over there. Uh, and obviously it is a little bit far from the actual cave, from the meadow. But I think that is still going to be, this is still going to be a really nice spot. So for now we're going to go ahead and put this barrel down here and put the tuff all inside of it. And when we actually get started building, we'll get a stone cutter and bring that over so we can actually turn it into the various types of tough blocks that we plan to use. For now, let's return to the meadow cave so that we can go down to the trial chamber and get all the copper blocks that we need. Shouldn't be a whole lot, especially because, again, with the stone cutter, a lot of them can be turned into the types of copper blocks that we actually want to use. We'll come out through this door here since it's a little closer to our existing entrance into the trial chamber. All right, and now we got to deal with these dang strays. Okay, come on. I'm definitely close enough. Can I hit you? Oh, it's the ice. Okay, I think now's a good time to eat a flower pie. Ooh, fun advancement for that. Oh, hello. I think I hear some more, but they might be down on like the way lower levels. They can see me, okay. All right, let's proceed down this way. Um... Well, actually, I mean, there's lots of copper in here. Let's just grab this. Oh, 
All right, went ahead and grabbed the copper bulbs that we needed as well. That should be just about everything. So let's head up and build our bridge. All right, the bridge is completed and I think it looks pretty nice. It's fun to walk across. I think the grates here every so often when they aren't blocked by the pillars adds just a little bit of extra texturing uh, in addition to the polished tuff that we have going on here mixed in with the tuff bricks. The columns holding it up have these copper grates down here as well, which are waterlogged, almost like the river is being allowed to flow through under the bridge. And I think it looks really great kind of arched over the river just like that. I'll worry about making the paths later and clearing away these trees and stuff. For now, let's go see if we have an amethyst cluster back at the geode. Take out this creeper so he doesn't fall onto us. There we go. Let's see if we got lucky here. And it looks like we did. I think I see at least one amethyst cluster. Oh, a few, I think. Awesome. We've got our silk touch axe. I don't believe there are a whole lot more pedestals, but we're just gonna grab all of the clusters that we can see here. So that ended up giving us three amethyst clusters, which as far as we know is two more than we need. We have these spares just in case any more pedestals do end up getting revealed, though it seems like we are nearing the end of this adventure. Now that we have our amethyst cluster, we should be able to unlock that last pedestal here in the laboratory and see if we were able to infer correctly what it offers. So when we did the green pedestal, we got this kind of blaze spawning machine. So now we have this purple one here. Let's see what it gives us. Okay, so another machine, just like that one. So as expected, based on the book, and this one has these black kind of smoky particles. So I'm going to be prepared. I suspect these are going to be wither skeletons. There we go. Okay. Oh, come on. Oh, no. Hey. Stay back. Okay. And yes, so we got one coal out of that. So just like with the blaze spawning machine, the mobs that it spawns don't actually drop anything. And instead, we just get one piece of, in this case, coal whenever we kill one. That is nice that in theory we have an endless supply of coal as long as we're able to keep killing wither skeletons, but obviously it's not incredibly efficient. So I think for now we will focus on other tasks. I do want to go over to that bastion remnant and see if we can get any useful loot out of that. Hopefully some enchanted gear, and we may even do some trading with piglins to get fire resistance potions and other useful items. Before we can do that though, I think we're going to need a little bit better source of food. We do have two hay bales, which is enough for a good amount of bread, but we don't currently have any meat, which is obviously going to be a much more effective food source. I'll go ahead and finish off the rest of my honey before we start eating the bread. The nether wart over in this brewing area is fully grown, so I'm going to go ahead and break it and replace it so that we can just continue to profit. Unfortunately, only got one nether wart out of that, which is a little bit inconvenient. And we know that this brewing stand is already charged as well, so when red start brewing, we can go straight into it. In fact, I'm gonna put this nether wart in here uh, even though we don't have any bottles in there yet. I suppose we could do that right now. Okay, so we've got some awkward potions already set, so when we're ready to start brewing different potions, then that'll save us a little bit of time. I'm wondering if it'd be worthwhile to get some farmer villagers in our trading hall to get some food from. Or maybe a butcher? Is that a smoker that's able to make a butcher? We have plenty of logs, so let's try that. Need another minecart as well. I'm assuming we probably have several villagers waiting in the villager breeder, so I don't think there'll be any issue transporting a new one over. Oh yes, you've got a whole party down here. Let's make sure our rails are ready. Yep, they're already in position. Okay, Ooh, wrong way. There you go. Come on over. Great. Okay, so now we can break this and this. Get our smoker, 
and put a trapdoor over it. Hopefully pretty shortly he'll set that as his job site and then we can see what kind of trades he's got. We'll want some emeralds too of course, I left those back up at the tower. And maybe we'll do some other trading with the villagers down here too. Okay cool, so he's got his job site set. Uh, looks like he trades for rabbit stew which isn't like awful, especially because that's a pretty decent exchange rate. We don't have a whole bunch of emeralds but we know now that that is going to be a decent supply. The only issue is it's not stackable, so I am tempted to break this and re-roll those trades. While we're waiting for him to reselect, we'll go ahead and trade with some of the other villagers. Be nice if he gave me a discount, dude. So one of the other things I want to do is level up these armorers. I don't love trading for these iron items, but my thinking is that if we get if we buy the iron armor pieces from them, we can enchant them and then potentially, if we have the levels, combine it with our current mysterious armor. So let's get some boots from this one and the leggings from this one. And hopefully that'll kind of entice them to maybe discount or, well, they're not going to level up, I can tell you that. Uh, this is a worse trade, so let's reroll that again. The other thing we could do, there are technically several lecterns back at the tower that we don't necessarily need there. We could get some librarians to fill out the trading hall here. And then potentially they can give us some enchanted books. We do have a sugarcane farm, though I haven't been maintaining it, so I don't know how much paper we're actually going to get out of it. But that is a thought. Let's head back to the tower and grab those. Yeah, I don't really need this lectern or this one. And that makes three. We can put these books up here in the library. So we have number five, number four. This is the kaleidoscope research, so I'm going to put it up there instead. And we'll grab the other books and put them in here as well. You know what I just realized? We actually have a ghast here, so we could make a potion of regeneration. Get that brewing while we grab this forgotten diary and this one. Okay, so number three, number one, number two, and number six. Awesome. Technically, we do have that other book from the ancient wizard back in the nether, so next time we're there, maybe we'll grab that too. But this is the complete history of the unknown author's attempts to deal with the ancient lich's tower. I'll go ahead and grab the sugar cane while we're here. Wow, that wasn't as much as I was expecting. Seems like rabbit stew is going to be the best trade we're going to get out of this guy. But that is certainly better than honey bottles, even if it's not stackable. Should be coming down any moment here. There he is. Hello, sir. Nope, 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 wrong way. Oh, no. Ah. Get on the rails. Get on. There you go. There he is. Oh, it's raining. At least it doesn't quite look like a thunderstorm. Hooray! That's annoying. Um, okay, can I do it like this? Haha! -ha. Fool! <laughs> so he's trying to open this door, so I made it so when it's opened, it's actually closed. <laughs> All right, with those three villagers in place, the trading hall is actually completed. Everybody is in place, has their jobs, and it's just a matter of leveling them up. I don't know if we'll fully level them up before we fight the lich, but... Oh, that door is not going to work there. Okay. That's fine. There we go. I think that still looks fine. Technically, we are going to keep getting villagers, so I think to minimize that... We will simply block this off so that they can't see the beds, and hopefully I think that will prevent them from being able to produce more villagers. All right, let's see what these librarians have to offer. Uh, this one wants a book, but it gives us an enchanted book, so that's cool. Or we can get bookshelves. That's pretty expensive, though. Uh, same deal here. He's going to give us fire aspect book. Here's our paper trade, so that's nice. Uh, and that is not enough paper. Okay. Oh, this is a different trade than what it had or did it just swap places that's super weird well uh i mean we want some rabbit stew i think i'm gonna hold on to those emeralds for now and we'll wait until we actually go into the nether uh there's a little bit of item sorting i want to do first it's also a little bit of a waste but i think i'm going to enchant this golden helmet just in the hope that it lasts a little bit longer for us protection three unbreaking three is not bad and we'll wear that when we're at the bastion 
I had no idea that the shaders I'm using have rainbows after it rains. That's adorable. That's so cute. The last thing we need before going to the nether is some lava. We're going to use that to kill the piglin brutes so that we don't anger the other piglins. Oh no, a villager escaped. No, he didn't escape. Where, does... Where did he come from? I guess he just decided that's his job site. He must have wandered over from elsewhere in the village. Well, hold on, sir. What are your trades? Where are you going? Um... I mean, nothing that I super need, but I guess that's cool. With that, let's head into the nether. So there's the Bastion Remnant. Thankfully, it seems like it won't be too difficult to get to. Uh, we do need to get down somehow. Looks like there's a little bit of a path over here. I'm going to make sure that I leave a path so I know where I'm going when I want to return. Um, so then from here... Ah, here we go. Pretty safe path, I would say. The main thing we need to watch out for is ghasts. Let's get a marker right here. And I think at this point, we'll go ahead and put the golden helmet on. So I am not a speedrunner by any means. So I don't know like the optimal paths to make the piglins chase me into to be able to trade with them easily. I'm mostly going to ignore that. Hello. Uh, and similarly, at least for now, I'm going to ignore that gold. We are going to rob some of the chests when we find them, but that is a little bit easier and safer than that gold that's just right out in the open. So we're gonna to need to climb up into the upper sections to be able to uh, start getting some loot. The other thing that we'll do here, we don't actually know what the black pedestal needs to unlock it. It's possible it's just a block of coal, but I find that kind of unlikely. It seems kind of inexpensive. It might be blackstone, though I find that unlikely for the same reason. All the same, we should have some on hand just to be safe. All right, let's see. So I think that is the way up. I hear piglin brutes. I don't know if they see me yet. I want to be very careful. Oh, oh. Okay, that was pretty rude. I only brought one potion of regeneration with me, but I think this is a good time as any to eat it or to drink it some bread as well that increases the effectiveness of regeneration to be clear it's not bread that increases it, it's just having full saturation all right i see some chests over there i want to make sure i'm safe from piglin brutes in particular before i go for them i hear one but i think he's on a different floor hello so let's see i think i'm going to can i put you down in this hole sir there you go good boy okay so he's out of the way i'm gonna like block him like that and hopefully I can open these chests safely. Nice. Ooh, silk touch diamond pickaxe. And what about over here? More obsidian. Okay. We got the main thing I think we were looking for, which is magma cream. But we want to see if we can find any other enchanted gear that we might be able to combine with our current. There's got to be ways up higher. Obviously, we can break through the roof. But I don't want to, like, have a piglin brute fall on my head. Okay, we appear to be on the roof. I don't know if there's any piglins or even chests up here. Okay, it seems like there's access to other parts of the bastion from here. That ghast is moving backwards. <laughs> what are you doing, sir? Yep, saw that. Okay. Whew, there we go. Um, okay, so yes, we have some additional access down to the rest of the Bastion here, including a Piglin Brute, which we should be able to kill pretty easily once he finds his way over to us. Oh, nice. There he goes. I don't think anybody can see me right here. Crossbow. Ooh, a Lodestone. That's sick crossbow. I don't know how useful that'll be. I guess having quick charge is nice. Proceed cautiously. Hello, piglin brute. Uh, I wouldn't mind getting just a little closer. He's pretty stuck too, so that's nice. Perfect. Okay, another piglin brute. There are more chests over there that we want to try and grab if we can. There are like three piglin brutes in this area. My goodness. Okay, so I think what we'll do then those so that we're a little bit secure here and we can try and lure these brutes into well actually they don't appear to be able to get back up from there they appear quite stuck there we go 
So now we can just make sure that we are safe. Grab these chests. Looks like we'll need to lure this guy over into a hole. Oh, there's some gold there. That's cool. We might try and grab that too if we can. Um, okay, so go down in this hole. Oh, there's a bunch more piglins. Okay, well, uh, why don't you all come into this hole? There you go, guys. Look at all that treasure. Are we safe to open these chests? I don't see any piglins around. Ooh, netherite scrap. I don't know if we'll be able to use that. Cooked pork chop is nice. Still no piglins around. This one? Ancient debris. Uh, I don't need the glass bottle. That's fine. Golden carrots are awesome. Hello. So at this point, I want to clean my inventory a little bit. I really evidently did not need to bring the rabbit stew. Let's lose the bow, honestly. Crossbow is going to be better. It's as long as I'm clear. Oh, there's a piglin down there. Can you see me? Uh, I don't think you can. Nope. Okay. That they are more aggressive to that than they are to chest opening. So time to escape the bastion. I think over here we can get down here and that should allow us to escape. Okay. Woo! Woo! All right, let's get out of here. All right, we got a gas to contend with. Hello. Oh, whoa. It despawned. That's annoying. All right, back at the portal. All right, we are back from the nether. We have sorted all of our stuff. We only got two netherite scrap from the bastion, so we can't really upgrade anything to netherite. But I think probably the most important thing we got out of that is a bunch of very nice food, namely the golden carrots, as well as magma cream for potions of fire resistance. We don't really know what to expect from fighting the ancient lich, but I think we are getting close to be about as ready as we can be. So now it's a matter of figuring out what to do with this black pedestal. Like I said earlier, it's possible that it's coal. I can't really think of any other block that is as dark as this besides like black concrete, which doesn't make any sense. We are a little bit low on coal though. So we'll go grab that and then we'll see. I mean, we can try the black stone blocks that we've got. Obviously there's lots of black stone around here. So I doubt it's that. We have a couple of options is the point. To get the extra coal that we need, I do think we will go down to the laboratory in the nether. And of course, the moment I take my golden helmet off, there are two piglins around there that I'll probably now have to fight. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Okay. Okay. He does not see me. Great. Okay. Let's fight a couple of wither skeletons and get some coal. Oh. Oh, no. Okay. Nope. Wandered in. Nope. Ow. Ha. Interrupting my slaughter session. Oh, interesting. That is a wither skull, not a piece of coal. Wow, so I guess there must be a chance to get wither skulls in addition to the coal from this machine. I wonder if the blaze machine has anything similar. I can't think of anything that would be. Well, I don't think we have any need for summoning a wither at this point, so we'll just continue with the coal farming. Oh, another skull. Oh my gosh. Wow. Again, we don't need to summon a wither, but we now have three wither skulls. This seems very, very powerful. Far more powerful than I think we expected reading the book. All right, this is fairly boring. We do technically have enough coal now for a coal block. So we do technically have enough coal now for a coal block. So we will just go back and uh, prepare to try the pedestal out. Let's also grab the mysterious boots from the armor stand and combine it with our current boots. Cost 17 levels, but I feel like it's gonna be worth it. And it is almost nighttime, so I think we'll wait until tomorrow. Okay, I think I'm ready. So let's try a block of coal. No, okay. That's not surprising. Like I said, it feels very inexpensive for what seems to be the last pedestal. I also don't think blackstone will work, but let's try it. And the last idea that I have is obsidian. No. Okay. Um, trying to think of things that are black. Again, 
I really don't think it'd be black concrete. I don't think it would be crying obsidian either. That's obviously even more purple than obsidian already is. Reasonably be the polished blackstone or anything like that. It, it really shouldn't just be anything that is here on this island for sure. That obviously defeats the point of having an arcane pedestal blocking up the lich. The only thing I can think of is it might be a wither skull. That would explain why the laboratory machine is able to generate wither skulls, especially so many of them. And this tablet here, you know, if you squint a little bit, it kind of looks like a skull. You know, you got the, the eyes up there, which of course are glowing with the soul fire behind it. A little bit of a nose hole there. And then these blackstone walls sort of look like teeth. So I guess that might be kind of the hint for me. Let's go grab that wither skull and see if that'll work. Okay, let's try wither skull. Oh, okay, yep, okay. That just starts right away. Awesome. Super cool. Okay. Um Okay. Uh casting a spell, alright. He doesn't seem to have too too much health. Got minions, okay. Oh. Oh, oh, okay. Ow, he does hurt you though. Okay. Ow! Ooh, ooh, does that heal him? Oh my gosh. Okay, he seems to have invincibility frames. That's super annoying. Ow. Okay. Shielding doesn't work. Ooh, ooh, that pushes you. Oh my gosh. He has so much health. Okay. All right. It seems like he can only really hurt you from the front. Oh, and we can hide behind this. Sick. Minions. Okay. Easy to deal with. They're really... Okay. Ow. Ah, that really heals him though. Holy cow. We really got to hide behind something for that. Okay. The minions. Oh gosh. Nope, nope, ow, ah. Oh my gosh, he really hits hard. Okay, um, regen. Okay, um, I'm gonna see... Okay, this is gonna be really risky. Oh, okay. Um, grab some cobblestone, uh, and run back. Can I do that? Um, oh, hello. Okay, he's still here. Bah. Okay. Awesome. So that does work. We can block his healing attack. Nice. I appreciate that the zombies are really easy to kill. Okay. Uh, nope. Oh, man. Oh, we were doing so well. Okay. That's fine. Those projectiles, thankfully, are pretty easy to dodge, it seems like. Minions. No. Oh, man. I just need to make new... Ow, 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 ow. I just need to make new pillars whenever he does that. Ow! Luckily, he's really slow, so we can, like, come over here and eat. Need another potion. Ow. Yeah, he can't heal from that. And then I can come over here. Okay, this is the strat. We've got some pillars. We go in for an attack every so often. We just make sure we're always behind one. Oh! Minions, go in. Luckily, it takes him a really long time to summon those. He's kind of stuck. Oh, no, he's not. Okay. He can just go through blocks. That's super cool. Whoa, what is that? That's new. Okay. Rude. Very rude. Oh, my gosh. That's so... Oh, my gosh. Oh, he's below half health. He must have new attacks. Okay. Second phase. All right. Floating again. As long as he can't use the healing ray. Okay. Just darkness. It's not that bad. Okay. Now I'm poisoned darkness. I can deal with that. Oh, he teleports. Oh, I think we're so close. Where'd he go? Oh, there he is. Okay. And, come on. Yes! Oh, my gosh. Oh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, my gosh, was that a hard fight. And it looks like the island has transformed. It's all green and pretty now. We still have this tablet here, which actually kind of more like a coffin. Uh, and this very sparkly pond, and there's a book down at the bottom. Whoa, 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 whoa. If I get in the pond, it looks like it's healing my shield. Will it... What about my pickaxe? Yeah. Oh, okay, it stopped. It is almost nighttime, but let's take a look at the book here. The restorative properties of this pool are magnificent. I believe this will be an ideal place to construct my new laboratory. 
I believe it will need to be fairly tall to reach this floating island, but I suppose I could come up with some teleportation spells to access it more easily. Although I can see clearly that the waters restore any damaged items I wield within them, I somehow feel as though my soul is restored somewhat as well. I wonder if this magic could keep one alive indefinitely, as it does an inanimate object? If not, perhaps I will look into some way to make it do so. This book is called Soaked Journal, and it is written by the Ancient Wizard. So it seems like this is the pond that the wizard mentioned in the Kaleidoscope Research book. So the ancient wizard found this pond, realized it was magical, and built the tower to study it and use its magic to do other things, eventually becoming immortal and turning into a lich. That was an epic boss fight and an epic end to this journey. The lich also dropped some loot, a totem of undying, a diamond, and a lich's staff. Whoa, which is giving us a bunch of extra hearts, holy cow. Does it do anything else? It's hard to tell, of course, if it deals damage, but if we, oh, ooh, if we right click. Ooh, spooky, it seems to shoot something. Uses some durability to do that. That just seems to go pretty far, wow. Um, let's go try it on some defenseless mobs. Ooh, ow. It looks like we lose the hearts if we unequip. All right, so I saw some sheep over here. Let's try out this lich's staff on them. Hello, Mr. Sheep. Wah! Nice. Just instantly kills it. Very cool. Yeah, this is a super powerful and fun reward. Um, I'm gonna put it in my offhand here. Okay, cool. So I do keep the hearts, and that lets me heal it. Now, it is, interestingly, I don't know if you can tell, it's losing durability every so often. Even when I'm not, like, using it. Yeah, so there it goes right now. So it only lasts for so long. This must be why the Ancient Lich had to stay here. The staff is part of what draw, drew his power, but he needed the pawn to keep healing it, and eventually the whole place just turned completely evil. Well, I think that is a really awesome end to this adventure. I hope you've enjoyed the series. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, consider supporting me on Patreon. I'm in the process of reworking some of the Patreon tiers. I want to be a little bit more focused on making really cool videos like these, and your Patreon support helps me do that. Thank you for watching.